and welcome to uh, this webinar as part of the York Festival of Ideas. Uh, my name is Peter Mayhew. Uh, I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Biology at the University of York. Uh, and it's my pleasure to chair this webinar today. Lixing Sun is Distinguished Research Professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at Central Washington University. He is the author of The Fairness Instinct, The Robin Hood Mentality, and Our Biological Nature. And he is the co-author of The Beaver, Natural History of a Wetlands Engineer. His most recent book is The Liars of Nature and the Nature of Liars, Cheating and Deception in the Living World. Today, he'll be exploring the evolution of cheating in the natural world, revealing how it has given rise to wondrous diversity. Um, Lixing, we look forward to hearing what you have to tell us. Thank you very much, Peter, for the nice introduction. So uh, today's talk is about uh, the liars of nature and nature, the late nature liars. And I'm going to talk about four, briefly, four issues, how common, how diverse uh, cheating is in the natural world. And I will, I'm going to briefly talk about two kinds of cheating, the lying, and deceiving, mostly people don't separate them, but I will do that today. And finally, uh, the third one is just briefly talk about, well, cheating has benefit, of course, but why there's honesty? What's the value of honesty? And finally, I will briefly talk about cheating in humans, very briefly. And the most of it, these are the, just some uh, highlights from the book, but you can get the idea more details in the book. Now, cheating is very common in the natural world, in the natural world, and in animals, in plants, and in fungi, as we uh, rushed through some of the examples. For example, possum. This is the only marsupial in, uh, in Canada and in the United States. There are about 100 species, in, uh, in mostly in South America, but <laughs> in North America, uh, very few. Uh, this is the only species uh, in the States. And when they are chased, they play possum, and which means play dead. Uh, that is the name is about, the, the slang is about. So they pretend to be dead so that, uh, well, the predator would uh, end pursuing. And we know that these chameleons are beautiful with some hormonal, complex hormonal investment, uh, involvement. They can adjust their body color so as to be blended into their background, invisible for their prey as well as their predators. And this is a caterpillar. <laughs> when they are, are startled, uh, they look like something different, right? <laughs> they inflate their head, uh, making themselves look like a viper. So nobody would touch it. Now, what is this? Truffles. Truffles are a uh, fungi um, that bear underground fruit. Uh, underground, they they look uh, they are related to mushrooms, but they are not mushrooms. But they bear the the fruiting body underground, and they are very expensive. Now I can give you some of the numbers. Um, in some Italian white truffle, they could sell for they could sell for more than $3,000 a pound. And the most expensive one was $264,000 auctioned in 2007. And that is a price uh, uh, higher uh, than the, the average housing price in your town, <laughs> in your town, it's what was about 190,000 a pound. Uh, so that was sort of like another uh, Dutch tulip, Dutch tulip. The reason is uh, because they bear a kind of fruit. They actually they they cheat for uh, having the pigs to spread the spore for them, and the way they do it is through this magical compound called androstenol. Androstenol is a male pig pheromone. When females sniff it. Well, they go bananas, they go crazy, and they dig and dig it out and spread the, the spores for 
uh, for, for the truffles. So what happened was, well, the pigs got fooled. The pigs got fooled. And, and the reason they are so expensive, because many people believe this thing actually uh, can improve people's love life as well. So that's the reason it becomes so expensive. And plants can fool animals as well. And this is passion flower, and there are several species. Butterflies lay eggs on leaves on passion flowers. They typically lay one egg per leaf because the caterpillars will have enough to eat. So the, uh, but the butterflies would avoid uh, laying eggs on a leaf that has already eggs there. So what the passion flowers would do is make some of their tissues look like butterfly eggs. So as to repel the butterflies from laying eggs there. So this is sort of like uh, plants are smarter than animals. And not only uh, plants, animals, or fungi cheat. Cells, chromosomes, even genes cheat as well. And here are some examples. This is a cancer cell. This is a can uh, cancer cell called HeLa cell. HeLa cells. HeLa cells are in all major cancer research facilities in the world still today. And that original uh, HeLa cells were taken from an American woman by the name of Harrianta Lex. She died of uh, cervical cancer at the age of 31 in 1951. But although she is dead, but her cells continue to survive. The reason cancer cells are so uh, malicious is because they keep dividing. Most of uh, our body cells, pretty much every normal cells of it, uh, would have died. They are so-called pre-programmed die, so as to serve the, the, the big society of your body. However, cancer cells go rogue. They uh, keep dividing. They cheat death. They refuse to die. So they keep dividing and dividing, and they can live forever. So basically, nowadays, fighting cancer is to fight cheating cells. And this is the chromosomes. We know that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes in each of our body cells. And these are often called the normal chromosomes or called the A chromosomes. But there are another kinds of chromosome in several species of other organisms. They call the B chromosomes. B chromosomes are cheaters. They are, these are small little ones. You can see these small little ones. They are numerous, indefinite. They don't do anything. They just get, you hit, get a hitchhike generation after generation. So get a free ride over generations so sticking around for their own existence. And also genes cheat as well. And these genes sometimes called a segregation dis distorter, or sometimes it's more colorfully known as outlaw genes. These genes are, well, we know that this is a pair of chromosomes, one from the mom, the other from the dad, uh, we have 23 pairs of them. But if there is an outlaw gene, and that gene, when undergoing meiosis, which means the formation of sperm and eggs, they actually send more of them to the gametes, the sperm or eggs, more of themselves, often by killing uh, the other genes so that they are overrepresentative in the next generation. So these are outlaw genes, they are cheating. Now here we come to the stage of knowing uh, what is cheating. And this is the definition <laughs> that is not in Oxford English Dictionary. <laughs> it's one of my contribution, but it will be hopefully. And lying is different from deceiving because the biological mechanisms involved are very different. Lying is falsifying honest information in communication. You can think of crying wolf. Crying wolf, the boy who cries wolf is to uh, to falsify the information to uh, other people. But deceiving is different. Uh, deceiving is through this cognitive loopholes, the, the weaknesses, the biases. For example, in our, uh, using our human as an example, we have vision, hearing, uh, and olfaction, for example. These are three main ones of course, taste as well. But we cannot hear ultrasound. We cannot feel infrared 
we cannot tell ultraviolet. And these are weaknesses. Uh, these are weaknesses. So these are there, and these weaknesses could be exploited by another individual of the same species or different species. So this is deceiving. It's very different from lying. Now, just let me give you some examples. That's easier. First is lying. Now here you see, this is a, a, a small fish called the plantain midshipman. It is all over in the west, west coast of the United States, running all the way from California in the south, all the way to, to, to Alaska. Um, so they are very common. Once I took my kids for catching crabs, instead of we got quite a few of these little ones. During the mating season, which is a, about summertime, the males will, they are living in a tidal area. The males uh, will uh, find a small little hole at their nest and they began to hum. The so-called sing, sometimes they are called canary fish. They are not really canary. They're just uh, making these humming sound. Um, nothing else, just, just humming sound. Um, but they make these sound and the females come and then lay eggs there. And then they, they leave the next day and the males will fertilize the eggs. Uh, so this is a female. But then, well, this seeing male is not the only type. There are also mute uh, males. They do not sing. They look like a female. They sm smell like a female. <laughs> they behave like a female. But they, they, they get into the nest and uh, uh, under the nose of these seeing males, and then they fertilize the eggs there. So the males often cannot tell the differences between females and these type two mute males. And this is a snake, it's called a garter snake, very common uh, in Northern um, uh, North America. It's very common in Southern part of Canada and Northern part of the United States. I often found them in my garden as well. And the, they often winter together in, in a common den, but when spring comes, uh, the males emerge first. The, the first thing males emerge, after emer uh, emergence, they will wait there until females come out. So the, once a female shows up, the bunch of males will compete for the female. And they, they fight dozens of them, even hundreds of them fight for the single female. So they wrap up, uh, wrap up like a ball of snakes, the serpentine ball, and they fight for the only female that is allowed to mate. Uh, so in that kind of situation, think, think about the, you yourself being one of these hundreds of males. And uh, what is, what's your chance? The chance is very low, right? So there is another male uh, emerged and that male pretended to be a female. And we sometimes we call this she male and they smell like a female, uh, they behave like a female. So they got into the middle of the, the mating ball and somehow, somehow got a chance of uh, mating with the, the female. So this is a second uh, uh, strategy for these males. So they cheat. Pandas cheat as well. Pandas do these territorial marking all the time. Uh, we, we know that they use pheromones. These pheromones are from two sources. One is from urine, which is understandable. The other is from a special uh, gland called anal gland. And anal gland is sort of like, a, um, uh, you have to rub that, it's sort of like a toothpaste. You rub the substance onto the surface so as to declare, this is my territory, my territory. But you know, the way the panda mark, they also show the size of the panda. <laughs> so they try to show, oh, I'm a big male and, and I'm, I, I'm going to defend my territory at any cost. So every panda wants to be big. So the way they want to be big is to mark high because they, are, they reflect uh, the size of it. So they do so-called hand standing marking. Hand standing marking. Now, if they use anal gland secretion, the anal gland is, uh, secretion is like a pasty, a uh, cakey uh, toothpaste. So it will be honest the how much you can stand high and how high you can get to. But urine is different. Urine is like a garden hose. It goes higher, right? It can go higher. So not surprisingly, the cheating pandas, the pandas, when they do mark, territorial marking, they always use urine because it goes higher. 
So you can pay attention to your, if you have a male dog, you can pay attention to your male dog. The smaller your dog is, the higher the leg, the, the, they will raise the, uh, the leg to mark the signpost. Next time when you walk your dog, pay attention to that. So this, these are the cheating panda or cheating dogs. And some of the, the cheating can be very subtle. Uh, and one of the, um, our own work is uh, from the just common lab my, uh, mice. The females we found once we were uh, looking for the pheromones in their urine, we found two pheromone compounds that would totally uh, uh, surprise us. These pheromones are only from ferrets. They're the arch enemy, <laughs> the arch enemy. We, 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 we had never seen that before, but suddenly we came up with this two pheromones from, from, from ferrets. So we were talking, uh, discuss, uh, discussing a lot about why, why, what on the earth uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ferrets uh, pheromones would be in, in female mice. Turned out to be that we tested, we used the, the the, the female urine without uh, these two pheromones or with these pheromones. And we found that the males will be startled once you present these two pheromones there. The turn out to be females often during the non-breeding uh, uh, time, or they, they would not to see, they would not like to have males around them. So the, they try to repel males from these, these unwanted appro <laughs> approach. <laughs> So uh, the sort of like harassment. So the way they do is use these pretend to have to produce these fer uh, ferret specific pheromones to repel males uh, from nearing them. Sort of like, oh, you're not tonight, honey. So, the, so that's the kind of way they, they do. Now this is lying, but then I move out to this deception. The, the foundation of deception is that cognitive loopholes in every animal. So now we will see that. This is a t-shirt. Would you wear that? <laughs> Would you wear that? This is a t-shirt. <laughs> Feels like you have a bigger hole uh -huh, in your body. And this is the artist's presentation, Rembrandt actually presentation of light. Basically, it's just a color. And oh, I will talk about that one, this one. And you can also take a look at these gray uh, stripes. They are the same gray stripes, but due to the background difference, you will see they are different. Now, this is sometimes called rotating snake, <laughs> the rotating snake. Do you see they are rotating? It is our illusion, it's our illusion. But these illusions also not only work in humans, but also work in animals as well. Here's an example. So yeah, so even dogs could uh, be uh, be um, be fooled. And another one, one uh, um, illusion which is particularly interesting is this one, the Ebbinghaus uh, illusion, which is fairly simple. is is a contrast. You look at the orange spots; they are the same size, but when they are surrounded by large dots, they look smaller than when they are surrounded by smaller dots. And this is called the Ebbinghaus illusion, and this actually by contrast uh, in Emil Zola's uh, uh, short story is called Rent a Foil. He, he said that, well, um, you can have an ordinary woman and, and basically what, when accompanied by a uh, worse looking woman and the ordinary woman would uh, look better or look better. But I could not find anything. I just saw she using the Gauguin's um, painting of mother and daughter uh, around the same time, around the same time. But turn out to be, this is not in um, Solos, <laughs> Solos novel, but this is also in a real world fish. In the real fish, these are the, uh, the guppies that are commonly used as feeder fish. Uh, some people uh, feed the guppies to your uh, predatory fish. These guppies are very interesting. These guppies with orange, these are males. This, this is a female. The males have these orange spots and black orange spots. The larger the size of the of these orange spots, they are more attractive. So, what the orange? Uh, these uh, this is a fairly fairly ordinary male. But what this or male would do often is to 
make the female attracted to him. So he would do is to accompany to accompany a worse looking male, which means with smaller orange spots. Uh, let's go together and to quote females and the females would be more likely to attract to these uh, just ordinary looking uh, males. So the, the, uh, these males are playing this adding house illusion trick. And there are more tricks uh, in Australian barbers, in Australian bird barbers, and there is a phenomenon called the forced perspective. When we, when you, when we uh, do this art, we often draw the pictures with the same size object. When they are far away, they look smaller. And when they are near your vision and they look uh, bigger, larger. And this is sometimes called a forced perspective. That's the way we create the kind of depth. And in Australian um, barbers, it, they do the same thing. The males build these bowels. Bowels are not nest. Bowels are just uh, a showy stuff for males to show that they are so skillful that they, they can build nice bower. And this is a female coming here to inspect the bower. If they find the bowels are good or acceptable, they will then nest on a tree in the vicinity, but not in the bower. The, so the males try to create an illusion by not only build a nice looking bower, but also put these decorations in this species, this great barber, they prefer the females like a white objects. So the males put these bones, branches, and the stones all over. Not only so, they actually put large bones and large objects far away, smaller ones near the entrance of the bower, so that they create the kind of illusion that bowels, uh, these bowels are deeper than actually it is, so as to attract females. And now also the more common one is uh, the well-known are uh, the even, uh, eavesdropping and also mimicry. We have lots of examples. This is zebra. And why do zebras have stripes? If you think that, well, they are trying to fool uh, lions by so-called uh, razzle-dazzle or sometimes called uh, the motion dazzle so as to confuse lions, that was not correct. Uh, actually, that was minor at least, at the most. A recent study in Japan by painting, by painting uh, the zebra stripes on the, uh, on, the, on the cows, you will see that Painted versus not uh, without uh, without being painted, you will see that. Well, the 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 difference is that the the fly bites will be reduced by fifty percent. <laughs> the nasty blood sucking flies bites will be reduced by fifty percent with these stripes. So this is a tremendous amount of reduction. Turn out to be the flies have these compound eyes, and these compound eyes somehow have a hard time landing on striped surface. So that's the reason the flies like a tsetse flies in Africa would avoid landing on zebras, on zebras. So that's the, uh, the reasons why zebras have stripes, so-called using this uh, motion uh, dazzle. Turned out to be there is an HMS uh, Kildangan uh, <laughs> in British, uh, a Navy turned out to be they tried to paint these zebra stripes to fool enemies. Apparently, it was wrong, but but it's too late for us to realize that could not fool enemies. And there are also um, nest parasites. Hundreds of birds species parasitize on the nest of uh, a different species or the same species. But hundreds hundreds of them do that. And this is a, an African species. We know that cuckoos and, and, and warblers, for example, this is African species. These are honey guide. And the, these honey guide, when they are hatched uh, in another bird's nest, many, many of them, they have this bill hook. This bill hook is a murder weapon. They, they serve nothing but to kill the host's birds, the chicks, or sometimes even the host's eggs, so as they can monopolize the food for themselves. And you can see uh, the grip is very strong, very strong. And once they grow up a little bit, they shed it off because it's useless uh, except uh, for uh, murdering uh, the host birds. In, also in 
about 300 species of orchids, uh, they actually use this cheating strategy to fool uh, pollinators, especially wasps. And this is an Australian species you will see. They look like a female wasp and they smell like a female wasp. And the male wasps coming to mate, well, they actually pick up the, the pollen. And when they mate with, try to mate with another flower, they actually pollinate uh, the, the flowers. So they live on these cheating on wasps. Now here is a little example for you. There are two species. One is called a king snake. They're both in Eastern United States. They are called king snake. That's harmless. The other one is a coral snake. Deadly, poisonous. Which one is which? I gave you a few seconds. So you make your pick, you will see. Now here is a clue for you in terms of uh, children's rhyme. Read it uh, quickly. Now you tell, can you tell the difference? This is the king snake. This is a coral snake. The order of the rings are different, although they look uh, very similar, very similar. How many have you got it right? It's not easy to tell them apart, right? Even you with the, with the children's rind, it's still very difficult. So that is good enough to fool predators, mainly birds of prey. Now here is another um, example of sometimes called mirroring mimicry. And two British people contributed greatly. And the first is Russell, Alfred Russell Wallace, and the other is Henry Bates of the Victorian naturalists. And they met at a library in Leicester City <laughs> before they went uh, to, together went to South America uh, to exploring uh, in 1848. And Russell Wallace, uh, Russell, Alfred Russell Wallace came back uh, uh, a little earlier. Unfortunately, the ship he was riding, uh, he was taking uh, caught fire. He lost everything. Uh, Henry Bates uh, stayed. Uh, Henry Bates stayed on uh, for a few more years and came back with everything. So he found that well, different the species, uh, even different uh, butterflies look alike. They're all toxic. Uh, they they all look alike in, in in same regions. You will see the bunch of uh, um, butterflies coming from the same region look far more alike than they are from different regions different regions, even some of the species are more similar uh, across different regions than in the same region. So they mimic each other, they mimic each other. Now, how this works? Turn out to be, this is so sometimes called apple semantic coloration. And once, well, you know that the, especially the birds often make mistakes, especially naive birds. They make a mistake, they die, <laughs> or some of them survive by vomiting but they die, so they learn the hard lesson. So they would, the next time they would avoid. Now this is the, the reason why aposematic coloration or sometimes called warning colors evolve. And this is all over. Uh, this is some of the species in Southern regions. They come in orange, uh, black, uh, yellow, red, all these bright colors instead of Batesian mimicry that blend into the background. They actually stand out. They send a message, if you eat me, you die. So many animals, actually many predators have the internal, uh, you know, sort of like instinct to, to avoid these uh, eating, uh, their potential prey with bright color. Now the question is, well, so many cheetos around, why, what is the value of honesty? Honest. I'm going to talk about the so-called handicap. I'll give you examples. This is a musical frog uh, found in, southeastern, uh, southwestern part of, uh, of China. These, uh, they come in, these, this is a male, they come in two different kinds. Males with a hole, they dig a hole, but the males just roaming around without a hole. And the females prefer males uh, having a hole. Why? Because having a hole, you have water and a tadpoles can, can be more likely to be hatched and survive. So females prefer males with a hole. But digging a hole requires energy, requires stamina, and uh, requires a lot of work. But the, the, the females tell uh, the, the males with a hole versus without a hole by listening to their sound. 
their mating calls emitted from a hole is different from mating sound just uh, in the open air. So that's the way females choose males with a hole, sort of like a, with, with property. And this is another example for the American white pelicans. This is a male during the mating season, they grow some uh, a kind of bump on, you know, on the tip of the beak. And this bump actually partially block their vision. So basically reduces its uh, fishing capacity. But why the males grow something uh, like this, which is a handicap, it's because the females can tell. Well, the males actually, by, by growing some kind of handicap, the males actually show that I'm good. Even with handicap, I can still catch fish. I can live well, and I, I'm strong. And this is an advertisement or a manifestation saying that with, even without, uh, with this uh, handicap, I can do very well. I'm very, I'm very, very fit. Uh, and the females would prefer these males, sort of like a peacock's the tail uh, fit the same uh, uh, scenario. We call it a candy cap because we take this as an analogy, sort of like a chess playing. If a good player uh, could, for example, handicap him or herself by, for example, giving away a bishop and they think, still can win you, which means his level is way higher. And this is the same logic for males to put, uh, put on these uh, handicap so as to show they are good. And the females tell the good males versus weak males. And this is handicap as a reason why so many species are birds of, several dozen species are birds of fry, are birds of paradise in Papua New Guinea developed to elaborate these uh, plumage feathers uh, in their body. In fact, when the first naturalist went there and sent the specimen back to the, the British Museum of Natural History, and people in the museum thought that, that was a hoax. Turned out to be that was not. It, that just was just handicap idea or handicap principle uh, runs very strong in these birds. Now we know that cheating in, in humans Basically, individual cheating, it's, no, it's, it's not different from cheating in any other animals. But institution, institutional cheating is different. We can cheat on a school, a government, or an organization. Or the other way around, the uh, an organization can cheat individuals. Or organization can cheat uh, uh, against, uh, cheat on another organization. So these are uniquely human. Now, some of the examples uh, we are well known, such as Ashley Madison, that is a Canadian online dating company for married people. So for sort of like a, for uh, actual marital relationships. Bernie Madoff, the notorious uh, scammer of the Ponzi, the biggest Ponzi uh, uh, scam in US history, leading to the loss of 16 billion US dollar, which is about 13 billion pounds, the 12, 13 billion pounds. Uh, that is the, the, the largest. And they're probably more familiar to UK people. And we know that this Dr. Ruja uh, Ignatova uh, a few years ago um, uh, concocted this one coin scam uh, and she did a lot of people. Uh, money uh, for billions of dollars. Uh, several UK citizens actually uh, lost a lot of money. And she went uh, incognito a few years ago. I'm not sure whether she has been arrested or not, but she went incognito. His, her brother was uh, caught and prosecuted in New York, in fact. And, and this is American special, um, <laughs> Elizabeth Holmes, who came up with the idea one blood can tell you everything, uh, all your diseases and everything. And she created this company called Therano. Uh, at its top was valued uh, as $11 billion, which was probably about nine, nine billion pounds. And turned out to be that was all a lie, a lie. And she was sentenced to 11 years last year 
So these are big uh, achievements. Uh, there's no limitation. But in in arts uh, and literature and and this kind of element of cheating or, or uh, lying deception is always there. And does anybody know this uh, this piece of art? <laughs> this is known as uh, the Fontaine by the French uh, artist uh, Duchamp. And this was recognized as, as probably the most influential artwork of the 20th century. But you get the idea, get the idea. And more recently, we know this painting is called The Savior of the World. Uh, of the world. And this was uh, discovered in, oh, in, uh, in 1958. Uh, in the auction, it was sort of like a, like a uh, flea market. It was sold for a hundred pounds at that time. It was a hundred pounds. Do you know how much it was sold the last time? It was sold in, in 2017 for 360 million pounds. Under the assumption that was Da Vinci's last painting. Oh, I'm not sure it is still real or not, but many people believe it. And that painting was actually bought by a Saudi um, minister of culture in 2012. So that was a lot of money. But then oh, when, and in 1961, there was an Italian famous um, artist by the name of Piero Manzoni, who created the 90 cans of ready-made artwork is for some of you who uh, who speak Italian, you are already laughing, right? No worry, Manzini actually wrote in both Italian and English. And this is <laughs> on the other side. Uh, it reads clearly in English, contents 30 gram net, freshly preserved, produced and tinned uh, in May 1961. But still, people valued it. He was used this as a mockery, but lots of people and museums uh, collected them. In uh, 2001, the great uh, art museum, Tate Museum in London, uh, bought one can of it for 49,000 <laughs> pounds. You get the idea. <laughs> you get the idea. But lots of them actually, because they were not uh, scientifically Autoclaved, lots of them uh, rot, rotted away and, and lost them. So there are far fewer uh, in existence, but each of them is more valuable, so called valuable. But basically, these are the same uh, psychological uh, or these, uh, these uh, mechanisms behind these uh, pump and dump and these. these in, in artistic world and in, in some others as well. And I discussed it in detail in my book and hopefully uh, you will enjoy it. I will not elaborate too much, but these are the confirmation bias, echo chamber effect and disinformation. Uh, these are three of them, main ones, there are others as well. Now you would say cheating, you know, when you feel it, it's, it's bad. No, 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 it's, it's not all bad. There are some upper shots as well. Uh, diversity, of course, we already talked about it beauty in birds and everything. Now I'm going to talk about social intelligence. Cheating is one of the reason we have social intelligence. And you look at the primates, this is monkeys, this is apes, you will see. This is the neocortex uh, ratio. Basically it's the part of your brain just behind your uh, forehead. And these are, this part is involved in decision-making. And the other is this, uh, the mean group side, the society they live in, how large the society is, you will see this is a positive relationship, which means the larger the society you live in, the more social intelligence you need. You need to what? To do either you, you manipulate others or be manipulated. Most of us are honest and they try to avoid being manipulated. Otherwise we get hurt. Now that's the reason children from very young age, they have to be taught and practice telling truth versus falsehood. We use the kind of children's game such as peekaboo, such as um, magic, uh, such as hide and seek, and to train children to tell what is true 
what is cheating. So this is critically important because when children grow up, they have to be mentally integrated into the adult world so that they cannot be hurt uh, by these by cheaters. Technology as the digital cheating scams are getting increasingly more common. Uh, the money involved invested in technology is more and more. Every year it goes up. Uh, so this spurs the technological development. And art and literature, we don't have to say that art use um, these illusions, deceptions uh, 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 substantially. Now, type of um, human cheating. I actually saw them into three types. One is pro-social. These are compliments of white lies we say every day to assure people around us that we are well-meaning, we are good intention, we are good people. So you think, think about that. You try to uh, reaffirm your honesty, your sincerity by, by cheating. These are called pro-social cheating. And this is absolutely necessary. The other is self-serving. Uh, these are sort of like uh, um, commercials. Most of commercials are self-serving. They will promote uh, uh, the, the advertiser, but uh, without being uh, without hurting uh, the people who are exposed to that. The last one, which is this is better one, anti-social cheating. These cheatings will will get the victims hurt, and these are flattery, these are fraud and scams, everything. Now this is the kind of category we want to fight, and this is a category we want to preserve. Now, at the end of my uh, talk, I will give you one example and give you three questions to answer by yourself. This is George Santos. It's a, uh, he was elected last year as a U.S. Congress representative from New York, from New York State. And he would, he, he was knowingly uh, make up all his, uh, making up all his stories, including his family history, educational background, employment history, everything. He was just short of saying, I'm from another universe. Now, if people like this got elected into our democratic system, then you have to think about this. Why do we still value truth? And can society democracy, democracy survive without truth? And finally, can we win against this information? Currently, we don't have definitive answer. I tried to answer, uh, but I don't think I'm fully successful. But please give me your insights. And these are the issues that are relevant to every one of us today. So I present to you my book and with a lot more examples, interesting stories uh, to enjoy and uh, get the messages from. And hopefully the book is helpful uh, uh, to, to every one of us and also uh, pro, uh, incite some kind of new ideas of thinking as to how to build our society uh, with more honesty and better people and functioning democracy. So I thank you very much. And please join uh, me for this Truth Matters movement so as to make our society, our life better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lixing. And we will go to the, the question and answers. So uh, we already have some uh, excellent questions in the Q&A. Uh, and we'll start at the top of the list. So um, this question refers to the butterflies in South America. I think that's the Batesian mimics, isn't it? Um, that's the, uh, the Mullerian mimic. Mullerian These mimic. are the toxic butterfly mimic, uh, 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 another toxic yeah. butterflies. Uh, so the question is, how did they know back then that they were different species and not, for example, um, differences between males and females within one species? It's a good question, isn't it? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Henry Bates, was a butter butterfly specialist. He could compare different species by minor details, including the vein patterns, to see the differences. And but then you look at the, in the, their appearances are so similar. Sometimes he himself got fooled until he looked into the details. And he found they are very different. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, and I suspect they, they tried to breed them out as well, didn't they? Because the, the <laughs> Victorian naturalists were very good at breeding butterflies. So, yeah. um, the next question is, um, is a good one for you, uh, Lik Singh. It says, you have outlined some amazing forms of cheating. What's the most ingenious form of deception you have come across? 
most ingenious de uh, deception. I would say the mice, the female mice uh, produce this ferret chemicals to, to get rid of the unwanted males. This was, we, we, we actually took us several months to come up with that idea and then tested this idea and found it was working. So that was a huge surprise for us. Certainly unexpected, wasn't it? So um, totally unexpected. The, <laughs> the next question down um, refers to Manzoni. I think I pronounced that right. Um, so this this is the artist shit, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, the question is, um, is he an example of lying? Uh, because uh, the question says he was very honest about what the deal was there. <laughs> yeah. Um, if it is use, uses the language, it is lying. Yeah, it is lying definitely, but he uh, was doing that for 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 mockery. He he tried to show that art, uh, people in the art world knew nothing. <laughs> that, that was that was his point. Mm. Uh, we got we got some nice compliments saying brilliant seminar. Thank you so much, and uh, thanks for the talk. Thank Do you, you yeah. think that our brains are capable of distinguishing lies from truth with improved AI such as deep fakes? Yeah, that's that's a wonderful question. Our brains evolve, of course, but suddenly you have so much disinformation, so much, so many scams. Our brains are unable to handle, and also cheating. The cheating scams actually evolve by themselves as well. And our brains, uh, uh, brain condition is not always good at that. Uh, as we, especially the the, the senior citizens. Uh, we know that uh, the brain condition is declining. And these people are most vulnerable to scammers. And scammers all try their best to attack these people because they have money, they have resources, and they are easier to be fooled. Uh, for example, everybody knows the Nigerian, uh, Nigerian prince scam. Everybody knew. <laughs> Everyone knows they sent billions of them. Uh, I, I, ha I have gotten hundreds of them. Uh, in, uh, throughout my life, but turn out to be, uh, if this was so obvious, you would think that how who would be fooled? Turn out to be that those who would fall for for tricks are those who do not have enough mental uh, acuity to tell the cheating scam apart from non-cheating, and these people are vulnerable. Yeah, these people are the most vulnerable. So even you are good at, uh, uh, you are sharp, you are smart. Still be careful that they can outsmart you, uh, these scammers nowadays. Our brain capacity is limited. And you think about uh, Bernie Madoff's scam. His victims uh, were made off. Many of them were uh, cooperate uh, CEOs. Uh, uh, the, these people knew financial uh, papers very well, data very well. Still, they fell into uh, these, uh, the, the, the Bernie uh, made of uh, pong that scan. Why? Because our capacity is limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the they can financial thing uh, can be really, really sneaky, tricky, uh, beyond our ability to tell. So this, uh, this is a good one. Um, do you think there is a distinction between cheating in animals and humans? The examples for the animal world seem to be mainly for survival, Whereas for humans, it often seems to be about financial gain or to hurt people. So I think the question is asking, um, you know, what are the reasons behind uh, cheating in animals and cheating in humans, and are they different? And I think you address that in the book, don't you? Yeah, that's that's right. Uh, there are several things. Humans use language, but animals, uh, some animals barely, but, but you could say that. But with language, uh, the cheating scams can be elaborated, far more elaborated than any animal can contain. That's one. The second one is, well, another one I highlighted a little bit. Humans also cheating uh, uh, institutions or institutions cheating on humans. I say institution means they could be uh, an organization, can be school, can university, can be government, can be a law system, for example, a cultural system. So any of these uh, institutions can be an identity that, uh, that can cheat or also being cheated. Uh, Volkswagen, for example, uh, a few years ago, had this um, so-called um, defeat 
defeat device making their carbon emission lower uh, in their exhaustion system until it was discovered by some engineers at, uh, I think, in University of Virginia. <laughs> they, they were systematically cheating on, on, on consumers. Mm. And, and I think the question was really focused on uh, what are the motivations? Um, so, you know, um, in the book, you and, and, and very clearly today, you, you've discussed how, you know, cheating is there for survival, uh, but also for reproductive success, isn't it, yeah. in animals? Do humans cheat for the same reasons? Oh, mostly, yes. Mm. Uh, we are biological species first and foremost, uh, foremost that we, we try to gain from cheating. Uh, mm. for various reasons, but of course we are far more complex. Uh, for example, we could cheat the political system, <laughs> not, not directly related to personal gains, but eventually uh, people try to create a system that is uh, favorable for them. So that is uh, the kind of thing that you would, we would never see uh, in animals. Yeah, so it's, it's much more indirect in some ways, isn't it? Because yes, that's right, subtle, direct, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good question that. Um, yeah. Now, so here's, a, here's, here's one about, <laughs> this is quite a nice one. Can you speak about the situation where dishonest people will convince the public that an honest person is a liar? I think that has something to do Say with that again. The, uh, the, the, the uh, dishonest people convince the public that an honest person is a liar. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's uh, 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 George Orwell, your countryman. Mm. Uh, in... Uh, 18 uh, in the book 18 uh 1984 it was all uh, <laughs> situations like that you mm. would say that just uh dystopia but it, it was partially real if um, the majority of people cheat uh in certain it does not have to be in entire society but in certain situations uh, those honest will not do well mm. So lots of information to process. Thank you. Perhaps the best way to fight the bad untruths is to educate youth to use critical thinking, right? You talk a bit about how to um, uh, you know, uh, combat cheating and, and deception in the book, don't you? But do you agree yep. with that statement? Yes, absolutely. And this is probably the only thing individual uh, people can do, so we can all do. But I think that's not enough. Uh, some cheating scams are far worse, uh, far more sneaky than than all of us could could handle with. So not only that, we critical thinking is key. It's critical for us as well. But also we need the help, sort of like alarming system, the policing, all these things uh, uh, should be there. For example, lots of people nowadays use uh, Bitcoin to cheat. For example, most of us. Most of us don't know really how exactly the Bitcoin would work. So until you have these experts involved to find uh, the, the, the owners of these Bitcoins <laughs> eventually uh, to catch them. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, something that I think beyond every, uh, uh, every ordinary person. Yeah. And I think you've just touched on the answer to, to the next question, which was about how do we protect those who are socially vulnerable? Uh, so you've listed quite a a good set of reasons uh, of, of mechanisms there. Um, I think we will have to make this the final question because of time. So um, this, is, this is again something you talk about in the book. Uh, um, actors' brains suppress their sense of self to perform a part convincingly. Is this a version of performing lying? And is this essential for storytelling to survive? That's a good question, isn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> the answer is already there. <laughs> mm. Yes, uh, it is. It's is sort of like a uh, lying or deception. I have a whole chapter, chapter seven, is about self-deception. Self-deception is how to suppress the part of brain uh, that is not uh, helping you uh, to, uh, to come up with the, the, the scams. Uh, so, so it's a whole thing. Uh, we have this self-deception. I actually, I once used, um, uh, served as a, as a bilingual interpreter in the conference. I had a hard time to switch the two languages back and forth quickly, back and forth quickly, because it took a while. It, it took a while for me to, to get used to speak another language. So you, we have definitely have this kind of load. We have to suppress it. I think actors, actresses have to have these kind of um, thing in their mind all the time when they play somebody who is tragic, 
they they should <laughs> suppress their happy <laughs> the happy um thinking happy ideas or vice versa when they play something happy they have to suppress their <laughs> sad ideas or incidents in their mind yes that's great great well, sadly, I think that's all we have time for in the Q&A, but thank you to the audience for those wonderful questions. I think they've really helped make the evening. First, of course, I'd love, like to uh, to thank very much our distinguished speak, speaker, Professor Sun. Sun. Um, you, you've given us a really eye-opening, thought-provoking and enjoyable talk today. So thank you once again very much for, for joining us. Well, thank you so much. I also write for uh, Psychology Today as a blogger about the same topic. So the, 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 the idea of cheating and uh, is evolving uh, or, or lying and deception is evolving when you come up with some new ideas, let me know. Uh, if you'd like to purchase a copy of Lixing Sun's book, I've got one myself and I've greatly enjoyed reading it. Um, so that's The Liars of Nature and the Nature of Liars. Um, that will be available from our partner bookseller, uh, Fox Lane Books. For more information on book sales, please see the festival website or head direct to foxlanebooks.co.uk festival of ideas. Um, so thank you once again for joining us this evening and that concludes the webinar.